let's get back into that truth bomb I let off that the glasses are making the prescription worse. And what they found now when they actually look at these eyeballs under functional MRI is that's creating this driving force for the eyeball to elongate. So in fact, a traditional pair of glasses might worsen nearsightedness because the eyeball is then stretching peripherally during the course of, not like immediately, but over the course of the year or two years to kind of catch up to where those light rays are peripherally. There may be something about the glasses, and this is a theory that's been put forth, the peripheral hyperopic defocus theory. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You take your child in to get their first eye exam because they failed the vision screening at the pediatrician. They weren't seeing well. Go into the eye doctor's office. They tell you your child is nearsighted or myopic. They need glasses to see things far away. Things up close are just fine. You could, maybe they complained a little bit seeing the board, but heck, everything is on computers and laptops and tablets nowadays anyway, so they didn't really notice. So you get a pair of glasses for your kid and okay, they, they see better with them. They don't wear them all the time. And the doctor said, that's fine. And then you go back once you, they said, come back in a year. So you go back in a year and what happens? The prescription has changed. It's gone up and you gotta get a new pair of glasses and rinse and repeat this happens every single year the glasses prescription seems to just be getting worse and worse and worse and it's hard not to think that it's caused by the glasses itself but then everybody always says that's an old wives tale the glasses don't really cause the vision to worsen well i'm actually going to tell you otherwise i am dr rupa wong board certified pediatric ophthalmologist practicing out here for almost 18 years and also the host of In Focus, the podcast that brings focus and clarity to your family's eye health. And this is gonna be this is gonna be like a life-changing episode because a lot of moms and a lot of grandmas are going to feel really vindicated right now because they always thought the glasses were making their kids' vision worse. And it kind of does. All right, so let me I'm gonna back up and talk first about the science about this. So this very common situation, happens every single day in my practice, in my clinic, of a kid's nearsighted prescription worsening every year. That is normal. It's very normal. And usually what we tell parents is the eye is growing, which it is, and the glasses are going to get thicker because a nearsighted eye is just an eye that's longer than normal. So if it continues to grow, the eye is going to get longer and the light gets focused right in front of the retina as opposed to on the retina. That is what being nearsighted is. And the type of lens, the type of glasses that we need to correct that is a minus dioptric power, a minus lens. So that lens helps, you know, curve the light rays so they focus on the retina instead of in front of the retina. That's the whole thing about how these nearsighted glasses work. And if a child is growing, as they are growing taller, if they go through a growth spurt, their eyeballs get longer, then the light is pushed technically even more forward. So then they need a thicker pair of glasses to push the light back onto the retina. All normal. And in the past, absolutely nothing that ophthalmologists or optometrists could do about it. Kids needed the glasses to see, and it does get worse every year. However, here's the thing. We're actually finding now, and the studies have shown maybe the glasses or the contact lenses themselves are worsening it a little bit faster than if they were not in glasses. Well, not wearing glasses and not wearing contacts, if a kid is especially nearsighted and struggling in school, that's not much of an option. That's not really something we would recommend for most kids to do. So that's why we never made that recommendation to parents. We didn't say, oh, don't wear the glasses. Now, if it's a mild prescription, I 100% say, listen, it's a minus 0.5. I don't think your child is really gonna notice the difference that much in wearing these glasses. So, you know, it's actually better just to not wear the glasses. Or I will also tell kids if it's a pretty low prescription and they don't need it for this homework distance, 
to take the glasses off, to take the nearsighted glasses off. That only applies for nearsighted or myopic glasses. Does not apply if your child is farsighted or has astigmatism because they need those glasses to see up close. But if they are nearsighted, which is all we're talking about today, if they are nearsighted, then they should remove the glasses when they're doing near work if they don't need them to see up close. Now, there are some kids who are so nearsighted, they 100% need, even at these really up close distances, they need those glasses. But let's get back into that truth bomb I let off that the glasses are making the prescription worse. And here's the thing, the standard single vision glasses, the standard glasses that we've been giving out for like, I don't know, hundreds of years, you see those old time, all those old movies and old pictures, people wear glasses for a long time now. I should probably know when that started, but I don't. But they are single vision glasses. And what that means is they help bend the light, like I just said, onto the retina. But where they're bending it is onto the centermost aspect of the retina. Now think about it. The eyeball is curved and the glasses are pretty straight. So they make a plane where they are focusing the light onto the center of the retina, but the eyeball's curved. So in the periphery of the retina, where's the light focused? It's actually focused behind the eyeball. And again, nothing we could do about that. That's all there was. But that, that process, the fact that peripherally the light is being focused behind is creating these areas of hyperopic defocus peripherally. And what they found now when they actually look at these eyeballs under functional MRI is that's creating this driving force for the eyeball to elongate. So in fact, a traditional pair of glasses might worsen nearsightedness because the eyeball is then stretching peripherally during the course of, not like immediately, but over the course of the year or two years, to kind of catch up to where those light rays are peripherally. And then it continues to do that. So this is part of also why you feel like the glasses prescription just gets worse and worse every year. It is A, getting worse because your child's eyeball is getting longer, but B, there may be something about the glasses, and this is a theory that's been put forth, the peripheral hyperopic defocus theory that's making the eye elongate axially, which means lengthwise, further to catch up with it. So what could we do? Even when we knew that this was the case or once we figured it out, well, there wasn't anything to do, but now there actually is. So if you're in the United States, like I am, unfortunately, none of these options are available for you, but I'll get to when we think that these might come out, these special type of glasses might come to market here in the US, but there are actually three different brands of glasses, which are now looking at that area of hyperopic defocus, the light being focused behind the retina peripherally and trying to minimize that. And they have shown that they slow the worsening of nearsightedness in kids. So this is really groundbreaking. So I'm gonna use the brand names when I talk about these because it's just much easier to find them if you're looking for places to purchase them online. And honestly, I can never remember the generic names and it's just easier for me. So the first of these is manufactured by a company called Essilor and the type of glasses is called Stellist, S-T-E-L-L-E-S-T, -L -L -E so Stellis lenses. And the way these glasses are different than a traditional lens is it's got this clear central zone, which is corrected for the distance that the child needs to see far away. And then it has these rings around them and these little lenslets offset that hyperopic defocus. So they focus the light in a curved way so that peripherally the light is actually focusing on the retina instead of behind the retina, like your traditional glasses. So this was the first one to come to market. There was a published study back in 2020, they're manufactured in China and the study was done in China. And the study was based on a randomized controlled clinical trial that was done in 2018 and they finally, finally published everything in 2020. And they showed basically a 60% reduction in worsening of nearsightedness in kids with these glasses. Now you might think that with all these little rings that the vision's gonna be blurry or it's gonna be weird because it's alternating, it's got areas that are a little bit more plus 
to put the light onto the retina everywhere on the retina but it actually isn't. I've held up these lenses myself. They look clear. They are the exact, they feel the exact same to most kids as a regular pair of glasses. So they don't really notice the difference with the lenses because the pupil size changes, your brain just adapts to them. And these have been shown to be a benefit. So these have, just think of them as like rings. They've got rings of different powers around the central zone. So that's the Essilor Stellis. The second type to come out is Hoya is the company name and the name of the lens itself is called a Myosmart. And this uses a slightly different technology. So the Stellis Essilor uses HALT technology, which is highly aspheric lens technology. This uses DIMMS. I know everybody in ophthalmology just, they like our, we like our acronyms and they're so hard to remember. DIMM stands for Defocus Incorporated Multiple Segments. So it's basically doing the same thing where it's trying to counter that hyperopic defocus of the uh, regular traditional lenses on the periphery. But instead of doing rings of different zones, it has these little lenslets. So think of it like a honeycomb type pattern. Um, and that's all scattered throughout the lens itself. And again, you've got this central clear zone and then you've got these little, like a ring of these tiny little lenslets around them. When you're looking at any of these glasses from the outside, they look exactly normal. They look just like a regular pair of glasses. You don't see these lenslets, you don't see them. The only way you see them is if you use a flashlight and put the lens down, you can see the rings or you can see the little lenslets then on if you put it down and put a piece of paper right underneath it. But otherwise, if you're just looking at a child with these pair of glasses, they look the exact same as any other pair of glasses. They're not like bifocals, they don't have a line in them. There's nothing that would make them seem odd compared to a regular pair of glasses. And so in clinical trials, they found that it decreased nearsightedness prog progression by about 50 to 60% over two years. These uh, randomized clinical trials were done in 2018, basically same year as the other, as its competitor, the slightly different version, the Essilor one. And these are really widely studied. They're used globally, launched in Asia, and then moved uh, throughout the world as well though of course not the United States. They are, have been sold in about 30 to 40 countries. They have 10 million pairs they've sold, but not here in the US. So mainly in Europe and in Asia. And then the last one is a Zeiss lens. So Zeiss is a lens a lot of people are familiar with. It's in a lot of different lens technology and the ophthalmology equipment that we use in space telescopes and all of that. And they've come out with their own version called MyoCare. And similar, basically using different types of lens designs to be able to focus the light peripherally onto the retina instead of behind it at certain points. So they're all kind of going with the same really treatment strategy, which is to stop the signal growth of the eyeball so that the eyeball doesn't continue to grow because it's trying to catch up with where the light is focused peripherally. Uh, and early studies have shown that it does slow the nearsightedness and it also slows the axial length. And that's something that the other two lenses do as well, which I didn't mention. They don't just slow how thick the the glasses prescription is getting, they do slow as well how long the eyeball is, which makes sense because that's the whole point. It's slowing the prescription by slowing the lengthening of the eye. Now, the Zeiss lens, really the studies have just started. It was first launched, I think about 2022, 2023 in China. It's not widely available everywhere yet, but they are doing studies currently I believe FDA studies to have it available in the US, but th that's gonna be many years. So as of now, nothing is available in the US. I do know that some of these lenses are available in Canada. Most of them are really used a lot in Asia and even Europe. So there are a lot of ophthalmologists when I go to my national meetings to talk about myopia management and I'm on the panel, I learn from my international colleagues because they have a lot of experience with these lenses. Now I do sell one version of this lens that's an off-label version, so it's not an FDA-approved version. I get it from overseas, but it is not something that I can say is FDA-approved because it's not, um, and it's basically an off-brand version of one of these lenses. But if faced with the decision in my practice of giving a child something, a pair of glasses, that we know is going to make their vision worse, and if I can offer them an alternative, 
even if it's a knockoff brand alternative, but it has the same properties and has these established lenses. And we know that this other lens can slow the elongation of the eye, can slow the worsening of nearsightedness. I feel like that's something that we should be able to offer because we don't know, at least in the US, it's going to be at least five to six years before any of these lenses come to market. So a couple things for parents to know if you are getting these lenses outside of the country, if you live in one of these other countries, first, will it make my child's vision blurry because it's got all these rings and lenslets and things? Overall, no. Some kids will report a little bit of blurred vision, but most of them in all of the different randomized cl clinical trials really notice no difference. And the most important thing to remember is all of these have a very central clear zone. And that's clear for their schoolwork, for reading, for up close. The, the extra stuff is what controls the nearsightedness, but doesn't truly impact the vision in that way. And then over about the course of two years with all the different types of lenses, they slow nearsightedness by about 50 to 60%. That's something to know. And the effect is most pronounced in kids ages six to 12 years old, but you can still get an effect later than that it just might not be quite as substantial as when you start it younger so this is why i also offer these lenses for kids as soon as they walk in and just so that parents know their options so the first two the Essilor stellist and the hoyo mario smart launched in 2018 we got a lot of studies in 2020 that are published they're pretty available especially Essilor is very available in canada for people that are in the us canada right right there um, and asia and europe hoyo maya smart same has 10 million pairs sold uh, worldwide 40 countries also not available in the us and neither of these have a, a launch plan yet in place to get fda approval uh, in this country and then the zeiss myocare i think is going to be the one that actually gets to market in the United States first, if, if I conjecture. It was released in China and Europe and Canada in 2022. I just think that the, I see that the company is making some inroads to try to get it to market. But again, that's going to be many, many years. There's no confirmed US date for any of these lenses. If you really want them, then you might want to try to get them internationally if you are living here in the US. So this is kind of the lowdown about glasses they actually might make your child's vision worse, but we still want your kid in glasses so that they can function in school, they can see during sports, they can do all the things they need to do. It's not offset, it does not offset the need for the glasses, but there are glasses options available, especially outside of the United States that can slow that nearsightedness down, that do not worsen nearsightedness, that do not elongate the eyeball in the way that a traditional minus lens would otherwise do. So just kind of keep your eyes peeled for when these might be available in the United States. If you travel abroad, you can use that as an opportunity to get a pair of glasses. If you have the prescription from your eye doctor, it always has to list the pupillary distance. So make sure you get the PD. Usually there's an additional charge for that, but just get the PD on the glasses prescription. And typically I found you can take that prescription internationally if you do travel abroad anywhere. But that's, that's the real truth of everything. We talked about glasses. Your mom and your grandma might have actually been right. That's it for today's episode. I hope you found it helpful and interesting to learn a little bit about what's coming down the pipeline and why and how glasses can affect nearsightedness. Again, this is just for nearsightedness, not for farsightedness, not for astigmatism only for nearsightedness, these glasses have been developed because astigmatism and farsightedness really tends to be stable. Nearsightedness is the one that progresses and worsens every year. If you found this episode helpful, share it with a friend and make sure to rate and review the podcast. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me on In Focus. If you found today's episode helpful, I'd love for you to share it with a friend, leave a review, or hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. For more tips on eye health, parenting, and staying focused in a busy world, follow me on Instagram at Dr. Rupa Wong or head to drrupawong.com. Until next time, keep your vision clear, your priorities focused, and your family thriving.